Well, good morning. We want to welcome you out to Revelation of Hope 2022. It is good to be uh, here. Could somebody close the doors back there? That would be good as people are coming in. We, uh, we want them to have to open the doors. We don't, want to, we don't want to hear them. All right. Well, it is good to, uh, to, to be here on this Saturday morning to... to uh, learn beautiful truths from God's Word. And uh, this is an important topic that we're going to study, as all of them are, right? Because there's nothing in the Bible that's not important. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to discover bearing the past and starting over. This is huge. I'm saying this is probably the most important one of all, right? And it's, uh, it's right from God's book, right from Revelation. So let's uh, pray as, as we get started. Um, Dear Jesus, we're just so grateful that you care for us. And we pray, Lord, that as we open your word, that you would guide us into all truth and help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, Micah says, Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity? He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all your sins into the depths of the sea. You know, a lot of people, when they study Revelation, they focus on the beasts. They focus on uh, the wrath of God. Uh, But included in the prophecies of Revelation, uh, is, is grace. Everywhere you look, there's grace. In fact, all of Revelation is a book of grace because those warnings that God has given about the wrath to come and so forth, they're all there because He loves us. Amen? He cares for us. And He, uh, he loves us. In Revelations, it says this, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Aren't you grateful for that today? I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. 
Without the blood of Jesus, we'd have no hope. But because of what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross, there is all the hope in the world, right? All the hope in the world. Now today our topic is about baptism. And somebody might say, well, why, uh, why do you have this in the seminar? You know, I mean, I thought this was about Bible prophecy and beasts and all. But you know, as we've looked night after night at some important prophecies, and in fact, uh, we're going to be covering at 11 o'clock the United States and Bible prophecy, and the Mark, Mark of the Beast as well. We're going to do both of those at the 11 o'clock hour. And so if you did not get one of these when you came in, uh, make sure you get one um, on your way out. There's plenty there. And so we, we've looked at these important, complicated prophecies. But you know, I don't want anybody to attend a prophecy and then go out and say, well, Pastor Graham taught us all about the beast, but he didn't focus on the most important thing in the world. And that's the blood of Jesus, like we just read in Revelation 1. And so that's the most important thing of all, right? And, you know, baptism is that experience where we experience the blood of Jesus, right? And so it's a beautiful thing. And, and people, people need to get baptized. The Bible says to get baptized. It also says sometimes that we need to get rebaptized. So this can apply to everyone, right? And we all know people who need to get rebaptized, amen? And need to turn back to God. So this is a very important lesson for us all. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Who, who was speaking this? That was Jesus, right? And this is known as the great what? The great commission, right, to his disciples. The great commission. It's not some small commission. It's a great commission for not just his disciples then, but for all dis uh, disciples of all time. Now, are, are you a disciple of Jesus? Yes. Yes, you certainly are. In fact, the church is here to be made up of disciples, right? And I don't want to say something that might hurt your feelings, but the church is really not for you, right? Now, we think the church is for us, but, but really the church is, is so that we can go out and be a blessing and share the good news of Jesus Christ for others, right? But when we do that, we're blessed ourselves, right? So it comes back on us because we're true disciples, right? For Jesus. So it's a beautiful thing. And in Romans it says, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, uh, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So just as Jesus, He was baptized, we are to be baptized, right? And this, this new experience, it's a beautiful experience that we have. It's one that we, it, it's, it's filled with symbolism that we're going to study, but it's also acted out in actual life, right? In the waters of baptism. So we see people get baptized, and it's an interesting thing, right? Sometimes they're down in the water. Sometimes they sprinkle them. I even heard a pastor, and I hope it's not true, that they ran out of holy water and they found a can of Coke and they just sprinkled the, <laughs> sprinkled them with the Coke. I don't know. There's all kinds of crazy things, right, that happens with baptism. But we want to look at God's plans for baptism, right? Jesus wants to wash away our sins. That's what it's all about, right? Washing away our sins. Oh, praise God. Praise God that he does that. I heard a story one time about a lady that she had uh, been involved with a lot of sin in her life. And uh, she had uh, 
done a lot of bad things. She was involved with the mafia and prostitution and all of these things. But she came to some seminars, kind of like these, these seminars, and she learned about Jesus. She learned about these amazing prophecies that pointed to Jesus. And she learned about how Jesus cast out the demons out of that woman, right? Seven demons cast, he cast out of Mary Magdalene. He learned how Jesus sat with, with sinners and Zacchaeus and others, cheats and robbers, and how he loved them, right? And as she learned these stories, she thought to herself, you know, there might be hope for me. There might be hope for me. And so she filled out the little card of baptism. And I have these little cards up uh, that I made up this morning, actually, uh, response cards. And at the end of this presentation and also the next, uh, I'm going to give out these cards. I made up these cards and I hand cut them myself this morning because, you know, these things are important, right? In fact, your decisions are important. Every decision that you make for God is important. And we're going to, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end here. But Jesus wants to wash away our sins, right? He wants to cleanse us. And that, and that woman, she decided to follow Jesus and she went down into the watery grave of baptism. But before she did, she said, Pastor, Pastor, I want you to hold me down under the water. Because I've sinned so much, I've been practicing holding my breath, and I want you to hold me down for 20 seconds. And, 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 so, and so the pastor complied, and he held her down. One, two, three, four. And he could look through the clear water and see the woman's face, and it was filled with joy. Because, because she knew that Jesus was washing away her sin, right? But he had not told the deacons on the front pew. And they got a little concerned. And so I guess they, they started getting concerned. But the pastor says, don't worry, don't worry. I got this. I got this. And when she came up out of the water, she shouted, hallelujah, hallelujah. And she said, Pastor, pull the plug because my sins are going to go down the drain. <laughs> They're going to go down the drain. All of her sins. Now, do our sins go down the drain when we're baptized? Well, absolutely, right? Absolutely. Not, not, not literally, but spiritually, right? Because God is cleansing us from all of our sins. And that is the best news of all, right? Isn't that wonderful? Now, 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I don't think we believe that, right? But God is at work in our lives, right? And he says, if he began a good work in you, he's going to complete it. He's going to do that, right? Now, sometimes people will make a poor decision with baptism and they'll say, well, you know, the Bible says get baptized and I'm going to, I'm going to get it whether I want to or not. I'm just going down under the waters because it's sort of like a life insurance policy. That sounds just like my phone. You got phones everywhere. I even got one on my, on my wrist here. <laughs> I tried to... I don't know if mine is off either. All right, so life insurance policy. That's what they think. They think it's some, some life insurance policy, but baptism isn't to be that way, right? Oh, no, not at all. The other extreme is, is that it, it's perfection, right? And people think I need to get perfect before I get baptized. Now, my mother, um, we're moving her up here to be close to us. Uh, she's been down in South Georgia for a long time, and she's by her, herself now. And, and so um, my brother and I have been scheming when to move her up, and her car broke down, and we said, this is a good time, you know, to have her come because she's without wheels, and she can come. She wants to come, but um, we just never could figure out a good time. And my brother said, now is the time. I said, Dave, I can't help you. I'm doing these meetings. He said, now's the time. And I said, okay. 
So I loaned him my truck. We bought a trailer, and, and he went down there and got my mother. And while he was sorting through uh, some of the old artifacts in the home, he came across this letter from the pastor that baptized me. And uh, this pastor, Pastor Ring, Ringstaff, amen, amen. All right, and, and so this Pastor Ringstaff, he uh, um, wrote this letter to my mother, and this letter was explaining to my mother how it was uh, that I was ready for baptism at nine years old. And how he had spent lots of time studying with me and uh, getting things right and making sure that I knew it all. And, uh, you know, I was down in uh, College Dale earlier this week. Um, I had to get, pick up my trailer and my truck and so forth. And, and so I was down there and just so happens I met that pastor at a store. And so I, I hugged him, of course, and then I, then I said, well, um, you know what my brother found? He found this letter. And it was from um, my mother, and it was about baptism. And he said, yeah, you know, your mother was such a perfectionist back then. Such a perfectionist. And she told me, she said, someday I want my boys to become preachers. And they might become preachers. Who knows? And so I want them to know everything, right? <laughs> I want them to know everything. Well, I'll tell you what, I didn't know everything at nine years old. But I'm glad he, he tried his best to thoroughly prepare me. But you know, sometimes we go to an extreme, right? And we think that we have to be perfect before we get baptized, right? We think we need to be perfect. We think that we need to have arrived. And the problem with that is if, if you wait till you arrive before you get baptized, you're never going to do it. Because, because the minute that you say I'm perfect, guess what? <laughs> you're not perfect. <laughs> In fact, I worry about those kind of people who say they're perfect, right? They're, they're, they're the ones who are probably furthest from God, right? And so that's a danger that pe people make in, in, in these things is, is, is they wait till they get everything right. Now we want to prepare people. The Bible says in the commission to go you therefore and teach all nations, baptize them and then continually teaching them all things whatsoever commanded you. So yes, there is a process there. And so there's these various types of baptism, just like I mentioned before, some sprinkle, some, uh, some pour, some... Uh, I've even heard of people using dirt when there's no, no uh, water. And really, some people say, well, the mode doesn't matter, it's just what it's in your heart. But, but I would say that to be safe, we want to follow what? We want to follow the Bible, right? And what the the uh, Bible teaches about baptism, right? Because you can get things confused when you start messing up symbolism, right? And so we believe that the Bible teaches baptism means to dip, to immerse, to plunge under the water. In fact, that's what the word in Greek means, is, is baptismo, which is to go under the water completely, underneath. And that symbolizes something, right? It symbolizes death, right? And when somebody dies, you don't leave them up on the ground or pour something over them, right? No, no, it's death itself. And so we, we need to make sure that our, our, our symbolism is accurate uh, when, we, um, when we baptize people. Matthew 3 says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so for now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. You see, there was one that was perfect, and that's Jesus. He left us an example, right? To follow in his footsteps. And then it says he allowed him 
And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. You see, he went down into the water, and he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighted upon him. Who was that? That was the Holy Spirit, right? Let me tell you, when you get baptized, God is there. Jesus, I believe, is there. All of heaven is rejoicing. And I believe the Holy Spirit comes down to touch our lives in a powerful way. And, and the, we see that, that happen. To, and He said, this is my beloved Son. This is, this is the Father speaking. In whom I am well pleased. He is still well pleased, right? When we as humans follow His plan of baptism came up immediately from the water. And in Acts it says, then Philip, Acts chapter 8, then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the Scripture preached Jesus to them. I hope that we're doing that in these meetings, that we're not just focusing in on the beast, but that we're also preaching Jesus, right? Because that's, that's the center of it all, right? And, and now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. With all your heart. All your heart. That's where it is, right? Because, because let me tell you something. We have heart trouble, don't we? We have spiritually... Uh, Heart trouble, and we were born with that problem. We were born with it, and we cultivate it over many, many years. In our childhood, all the way up. But let me tell you, there's something that wipes away all that heart problem, and that's belief. Belief in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ. It washes all the problems away. Let me tell you, it does. If you have enough faith, the Bible says you can move mountains, right? We all have mountains that, that we need removed, right? So it's belief in our heart that we may. And he, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, right? And he baptized him. Now when they came out of the water, right? Oh, what joy there must have been, right? What joy! And so, according to that, he, he said, what's hindering you? What's hindering you from being baptized? You know, as I've thought about it, we try to blame others at times, but so often it's our own self, right? So often it's even the church keeps people from baptism, Right? Sometimes we, uh, we want people to be perfect, right, beforehand. And that's, that's a problem, right? That's a problem. But you know, as a pastor, we have to try to discern. We have to try to discern. Are they doing this with their heart? Or are they just trying to make a check off, check or get their fire insurance? And it's hard to tell at times. Remember that person that came to Jesus and they said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Do you remember that? And, and, and Jesus could read his heart. And he knew, and there was probably signs around him too that, that told. And, and, and he said, go sell all that you have, and then you can come and be my disciple, right? Now that sounded harsh. But money was his God. And when you're following false gods... You're not ready because his heart wasn't ready, right? And let me tell you, as a pastor, I've baptized people that I didn't think were ready. And, that, and that's, a, that's a, a very weighty thing for a pastor to do. I don't ever want to do that again. And I could tell you stories, and, and they'd be sad stories, right? Just one story, I'll tell you just one. We have a few minutes. So, 
but this couple came to me. They wanted to get they wanted to get married, and and the, their their father said, uh, you know, he's got to be baptized in the church, and, and or else you can't marry him. You know, because the Bible says don't be equally yoked, right? Good father trying to follow the Bible, right? And so they come to the pastor, and the pastor, you know, he's trying to discern, you know, is this are they are they genuine or are they they just trying to get married? I don't know. So I studied with them. We studied together for weeks and weeks. And you know, when I studied, I realized that not only the guy needed baptism, but but the girl probably needed it too, right? Now she had been brought up in the church. So she probably needed a church, but did she want to get baptized? No. And so I remember baptizing this fella and hoping and praying to God that he was doing it for the right reasons. And sometimes you just can't tell, right? Hoping and praying to God. Sometimes that's what we do, and then other times we just say, no, we can't because we discern something about those folk. They're not teachable. They're not willing to even talk to you, right? And you discern that and you just have to say, no, I'm sorry. Kind of like Jesus did. No, you can't be my disciple until you stop worshiping those false gods. It's very sad, let me tell you. Very, very sad. But you know, what's hindering you from being baptized? What's hindering you? Let me tell you, the devil's hindering you. Right? And sometimes it's yourself that hinders you because, because you're looking to yourself instead of looking to Jesus, right? Other times it's you're not willing to follow truth because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So you're not really willing to follow Jesus, right? Because you're not willing to follow Him all the way because your heart is not with it. You don't love Him, right? Right? And so many times, these are some of the things that hinder, hinder us. Now this is a picture of an ancient baptistry. And if you look at archaeology, you can see in many churches over in Europe today, you can see that they used to baptize people uh, by immersion. They, they had actual baptismals. Now, nowadays, they don't, they don't do that. There's all kinds of things that they do. And then uh, we know from history that the Council of Ravenna it was the Council of Ravenna that the church in the Middle Ages officially accepted sprinkling and pouring as equally valid as immersion. Now we done saw from the scriptures that that's not the way, right? It's not the way. So what can we do to uh, be baptized? What can we do? What are the steps? First of all, we need to believe in it and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Right? It's personal. It's personal with you. It's personal with God. It's a personal matter, right? And uh, nobody can do it for you. They may want you to get baptized, but you can't get into heaven on somebody else's <laughs> coat strings, as they say, right? You just can't. And so it's got to be a personal thing that you decide for yourself. That's why we don't baptize babies, right? Because they're not old enough to, to make that personal commitment, right? It just doesn't mean anything to them yet, right? And then uh, repentance, uh, this is something that God gives us. That is, as we're exposed to the Word of God and we see new truths in our lives, we say, oh God, I've been doing some things wrong. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. So Lord, please God, give me, give me the gift of repentance. And I'll tell you, you can't make yourself sorry enough. That's righteousness by works, right? When you're trying to, to look at yourself and make yourself sorry enough, where you're saying to yourself, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat myself up so that I'll get so that I'll repent, right? That's, that's what they used to do in the Dark Ages, right? Martin Luther, he'd whip himself in the monk's cell, whip himself with a real whip. Isn't that sad? Well, people are whipping themselves today still, and all they need to do is just come to Jesus, 
just as they are. And then have a basic knowledge of his teachings. There is so many things that we have covered in this seminar. Haven't we covered an amazing amount of stuff? Amazing amount of stuff in this seminar, right? And you, you know more than many people know that have been to undergraduate theology school. I went through it and I know. If you paid attention during these meetings and studied your Bible, you know... Uh, but you know, there's always so much more to learn, right? There's always so much more to learn. And so you're going to be learning for the rest of your life. But the Bible says that some people learn and learn and learn and they never come to a knowledge of the truth because they never make a decision for Jesus. And you got to make a decision or else your life is never changed. And so we see people that learn and learn and learn and they know it all, right? But they don't know Jesus. Because of that, it never changes their life. So we need to know the basic teachings of the Bible. And we've been trying to cover those things as we've looked at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we, we should always lift up Jesus whenever we stand up here. Amen? Jesus should be the center of our preaching, our lives, our homes, our family worships, everything, right? So this is the basic teaching. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If you're one of those who sort of lean toward perfectionism, this is a promise for you. Because let me tell you, it's not you that's going to make you perfect. Who's going to make you perfect? The one who just promised this promise here. He says he's able to complete it in you. He began the good work. He called you. And He's going to finish the work. So stop trusting in yourself. Right? Stop trusting in yourself. Don't trust... Don't You know, as you learn more truths from the Word of God, the danger is that you're just going to trust in those things. You're going to trust in your own knowledge. Oh good, I know what day is the Sabbath. Praise the Lord, that's very important. We're going to talk about that next in just the next hour and some of these other things with the mark of the beast we're going to be focusing on the mark of the beast but let me tell you this so important so important and some people never get it that it is Jesus it is Jesus and he will show you the truth and if you walk in it because you decide to follow Jesus, he will, he will take you home. Do you believe that? we got to believe it. So we believe and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We repent, and that's even a gift from God. And we turn from our sins. You wouldn't want to remain in all those things that enslaved you. All those things that hurt you and made you feel guilty and caused suffering in your life. No, God wants to begin to take those things out of your life and my life. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen? Ah, oh, praise God. And then study these things, these basic knowledge of His teachings. Now somebody's going to ask, well, what about rebaptism? How many times should I get uh, rebaptized or should I get rebaptized? I've been baptized before, and should I get rebaptized? Well, I want to tell you that's really that's really between you and the Lord. That's really between you and the Lord. I can't tell you. I can't. And in fact, I don't even want to know unless it can help you. Why you want to get rebaptized? If it can help you, then can tell me, and then I'll tell you how I can help you, right? 
But if you've been baptized by immersion, the biblical way, and you know the basic teachings of the Scripture that we're, we're talking about here, uh, then, then you can get rebaptized if your heart is right. And that's if the Lord is leading you to that experience. And many, many of us have been rebaptized. Amen? It's a, it's a wonderful experience. And you know, we may just plan a baptism maybe the last night of our prophecy seminar, and maybe we can all wear those t-shirts. You don't have a t-shirt, we'll give you one. And those are the revelation of, of hope t-shirts. And maybe we can fill the tank here and anybody who wants to get rebaptized and meet those qualifications that I talked about, <laughs> praise the Lord, can do so. Amen? Praise God. Just let me know on the card that we're going to pass out. Now Acts 19 says, And finding some disciples, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to Him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And He said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Remember, the baptism of repentance, right? The, the forgiveness of sin, right? And, and the apostle was like, yeah, but you, you didn't even know about the Holy Spirit? <laughs> you didn't even know. Apparently, they, they, were teaching, they were teaching about repentance and water baptism, but Jesus, when He was here, says that you need to be baptized with not only water, but a fire, right? And we know the fire is the Holy Spirit. And so it says in the Bible here that they decided to get rebaptized. John indeed, it says, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that you should believe on him who would come after him, that is Jesus Christ. Baptized with the water of repentance, yes. Oh, we need those waters, right? But then we need the Holy Spirit to come down like a dove, right? And to change our lives and bless us. What a blessed experience this is. In Acts chapter 19, it says, when they had heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, there's not some magical names or names. Sometimes people will teach that. If you, if you got baptized, you know, there's some secret name that you need to know about. But we ought to at least be baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus, right? We... <laughs> Because that's what the Bible says, right? So that's, that's pretty clear. John 3 says, in verse 5, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We just talked about that. John 14 says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Helper, that He may abide with you Forever. Isn't this good news? This is what God wants for all of us to receive His Holy Spirit. What a blessing it is to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm so grateful today that God has promised to give us His Holy Spirit. And the Bible describes this as happening at baptism. And then every day of our lives, the Holy Spirit, if we are willing, if our heart is right. And so, uh, Phil, could you help me? I have these uh, cards, and I want everybody to get one, and then if you could um, give them the leftovers to me when you're done, and maybe you want to recruit somebody else to help you. And, uh, and, and these are, are uh, the response cards. Remember, I told you this is the most important presentation of all the seminar, right? Really, most honestly. And it says, I know that Jesus is my Savior. Do you know that He's your Savior? Do you? Do you know that? I desire to follow Him with all my heart. That's probably the hardest one to check of all the check marks. That's the hardest one. Secondly, I would like to experience Bible baptism by immersion one day soon. I don't know what God is leading you to do. 
you know, this is between you and Jesus. But if He's leading you to be baptized by immersion, we just want to help you. We just want to help you. And we will help you. And we'll do it up here behind, those, behind the signs there. There's a baptismal tank. We'll clear the flowers out of the way and all that. And we'll fill up that tank. And we'll baptize some people. Amen? And that's okay. Baptized many people before. And nobody drowned. Hallelujah. And so what a joy to see people baptized and, and to experience that baptism. And all of heaven is rejoicing when that happens, whether it's for the first time or, or whether it's for the tenth time. I don't care. The, the Bible doesn't say, right? That's between you and the Lord. We're going we're gonna, to, by God's grace, have a baptism on the last night of our series. And, uh, and whoever wants to get baptized, we're just going to fill the water and put on some t-shirts, or if people don't want to do that, they can put a robe over it. I don't care. And, and we'll baptize them. And that'll be a blessing. That's on what, November 12? That's next weekend, right? And so if you want to do that, just check the card because I need to meet with you and we need to prepare for this special event, right? And you might need to invite some family out, right? It's a big, it's a big time thing. And then it says, I have strayed from the Lord and I would like to be rebaptized. Now we've all strayed from the Lord, haven't we, from time to time? Yes. And, and some of us have, have strayed further than others, but we've all strayed. So again, all of this is between you and the Lord, right? It's between you and the Lord. But if that is your desire, just put that check mark and we'll talk, and I don't even have to know, but we want to help you in, in all that we can. And then um, I would like someone to study the Bible with me. Now, this is important because some folk have missed some of the series here, and there's maybe gaps there. And, uh, and you know, uh, we don't... We want to answer the question so that you have the basic beliefs before your baptism. And you know, I, I, I just hope and pray that, that you will, will do this. And at this time, we have uh, my good friends that are going to sing. And as they sing, I want you to take the card. Everybody, does everybody have a card? If you don't have a, does, every, does everybody have a, if you do not have a card, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Everybody has one. Or you're lying to me right now. Are you lying? All right, all right, let me get the card. All right, Phil, can you help me again? There's some that didn't get cards. I want everybody in this room to have one. I don't care if, how many times you've been baptized or whatever. Just, uh, um, I'll, I'll help. Who didn't get one? You? All right, who else? Who didn't get one? All right, you. All right, who else? Anybody else not get one? All right, everybody. And does everybody have pens and, and, or pencils? There's some in the pew rack. If any, Does anybody need a pen? It's hard to write without a pen or a pencil. Yes. All right. So everybody, we want everybody to have one. Everybody to have one. Did you, Jack, did you get one of these? All right, everybody has it now. All right. And as, as they sing... Think about what you want to write on the card. You can fill in those check marks or, or you can write something in the back. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to be studying every single card that, that I get in. And uh, after they sing, I want you to take the card and fold it over. And then, um, and then I'm going to stand right at the back and we're going to take a little break b before our next uh, feature. And I want you to give those personally to me because I'm going to study those carefully uh, when we close. So sing for us. God bless.
Take me to the water to be baptized. Bury me with Jesus, the crucified. Launch me in the fountain, and may I run. Take me to the water to be baptized. What a joy and blessing to be baptized as a testimony of a work inside. God has cleansed me into new life. He I've come to the water to be Take me to the water to be baptized. Bury me with Jesus, the crucified. Launch me in the fountain, and may I run. Take me to the water to be baptized. Come to the water to be baptized. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, uh, we're so grateful for this beautiful message that you have given us today in this message for our lives. And so, Lord, um, watch over us and keep us until that great day when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, we're going to take about a... Uh, uh, a five minute break. Time is just zooming on. So get a break, get in, get, get back. And we're going to start here at about uh, 10 uh, 53. All right, very good.